Thanks for joining me for this second part of my series on Antoine Henri Yomini's views on statesmanship and war. Yomini was a Swiss military officer who served as a general in the French and Russian armies during the early 18th century and his writings have been influential on political and military philosophy ever since. In this part, we will be considering the second five of Yomini's articles on statesmanship as he described them in the first chapter of his book, The Art of War. Let's pick up our discussion with his sixth article, Aggressive Wars for Conquest and Other Reasons. In this article, Yomini delves into the treacherous territory of aggressive wars that are driven by the desire for conquest. He acknowledged their allure, citing historical figures like Alexander, Caesar and Napoleon who achieved initial success through expansion. However, he also warns the reader against overlooking the inherent risks and limitations of such ventures. Yomini candidly admits that there are significant potential benefits of aggressive wars. They can quickly expand territory, secure resources, and enhance national prestige as well as the leader's personal standing. This seductive narrative resonates with leaders hungry for power and expansion. He distinguished between two primary types of aggressive campaigns. The first, the conquering of adjoining states, involves invading a neighboring territory with the intention of expansion. While he acknowledged the historical success of such ventures, he also cautioned against underestimating the inherent risks. He emphasized the logistical challenges of sustaining a long-distance campaign on hostile ground, a fault he noticed in Napoleon's strategy. He also saw the potential of igniting opposition from neutral powers who might have concerns about this expansionism. The second, and riskier strategy was crossing neutral territory to attack a distant target on the other side. Yomini saw this as a gamble, fraught with uncertainty and dependent on the unpredictable behavior of neutral parties. They may choose to remain neutral, join the attacker, or even side with the defender. Navigating this complex diplomatic landscape requires adept political maneuvering and careful consideration of the potential consequences. Despite the significant potential for initial successes, Yomini warns that these aggressive wars harbor hidden dangers. As armies push further, logistical challenges mount, supply lines become vulnerable, and local populations may turn hostile. This can lead to a precarious situation where victories become pyrrhic, draining resources and making armies susceptible to counteroffensives. Napoleon's invasion of Russia is a key example of this. Yomini was also concerned about moral decay. The constant pursuit of conquest at any cost can breed corruption and a thirst for plunder, eroding discipline and undermining the very values that initially fueled the war effort. This can lead to internal dissent and weaken the nation's overall resolve. He further noted that aggressive expansion often triggers political backlash from other powers who feel threatened by the rising conqueror. This can lead to the formation of alliances against the aggressor, creating a formidable united front that can ultimately bring down the empire built on conquest, another example he drew from Napoleon's failed ambitions. Yomini also argued that even the most successful campaigns have inherent limitations. Terrain, climate, and cultural resistance can all act as natural barriers, preventing further expansion and forcing the aggressor to consolidate gains instead of pursuing boundless conquest. Now, let's consider Yomini's seventh article, Wars of Opinion. Unlike wars for territory or resources, these conflicts arise from clashing ideologies, religious beliefs, or political systems. He saw such wars having unique challenges and considerations since the fight was for intangible and difficult to quantify objectives. He identified three distinct types of wars of opinion. The first is internal or civil wars. These conflicts arise within a single nation, pitting different factions with opposing ideologies against each other. He covered this type in more detail in his ninth article. The second is a foreign war over opinion. These wars involve the imposition of one state's ideology upon another, often driven by a desire to spread religious or political beliefs. This is a scenario we have seen time and time again throughout history and are at the root of some of our current conflicts. The most complex variant he mentioned were hybrid wars where internal and external forces intertwine, making it difficult to distinguish between domestic dissent and foreign intervention. 
We saw this kind of conflict often during the Cold War and still see it today in the current conflict in the Middle East. Yumini cautioned that since these conflicts transcend specific borders and are driven by the desire to propagate or defend ideologies, religions, or political systems, their goals can be intangible and far-reaching, adding a layer of complexity to strategic considerations. He highlighted that there is often an intricate web of alliances and enmities that characterize wars of opinion. Unlike clear-cut conflicts between two rival nations, these wars can see unexpected alliances emerge based on shared ideologies or a common fear of the dominant power. Additionally, internal factions within each nation may be divided along ideological lines, further complicating the strategic landscape. While military force plays a crucial role in such conflicts, Yumini emphasized the importance of persuasion and propaganda. Winning hearts and minds becomes as important as conquering territory. Therefore, success hinges on effectively communicating the righteousness of one's cause and undermining the legitimacy of the opponent's ideology. This has been a common failure point in such wars. Yumini also cautioned against the dangers of relying solely on the fervor for a particular opinion to fuel the war. While it can initially provide potent motivation, it can also blind soldiers and leaders to the realities of the conflict, leading to reckless decisions and prolonged brutal wars. Also, as the horrible reality of war sets in, it can make the underlying opinion less attractive. He saw finding a pragmatic balance as a key to achieving sustainable victory. He also saw these wars having the same risks of creating a quagmire as any other war of intervention. Such intervention can easily draw the intervening power into a protracted conflict with unpredictable consequences. He cautioned that a thorough understanding of the complex alliances and ideologies at play would be essential before entering such a fray. In Article 8, Yomini discusses what he calls a national war, a conflict ignited by a nation's fight for independence or defense against an invader. He declared national wars as the most formidable of all, emphasizing the unparalleled determination and resilience of a people defending their homeland. He argued that every inch of land is contested, every obstacle a potential death trap, and every citizen a potential soldier. Invading armies often found themselves navigating unfamiliar terrain while facing guerrilla tactics and hostile populations. Supply lines become vulnerable, communication lines thin, and every victory feels pyrrhic, draining resources and morale. These difficulties demand a different approach to warfare. He saw several lessons from history where leaders adapted their strategies to the specific dynamics of national wars. He emphasizes the importance of minimizing civilian casualties, winning the hearts and minds of the populace, and exploiting the enemy's logistical vulnerabilities. Yomini also recognized the limitations of pure military might in national wars. He argued that skillful diplomacy can be a vital weapon, both for securing alliances with neighboring states and fostering internal dissent within the enemy nation. He emphasized the importance of aligning one's cause with universal ideals like freedom and justice, thus attracting international sympathy and potential allies. This is a strategy that Ukraine has used with some success in their current conflict with Russia. Despite the significant challenges he noted, Yomini does think an aggressor can win a national war. He thought that by adopting disciplined and orderly conduct, maintaining strong leadership and leveraging logistical advantages, an invading army can still achieve victory. As we have seen, Russia has had difficulty in these areas, thus robbing them from a quick victory and sinking them into a long-running quagmire. In Article 9, Yomini ventured further into the thorny thicket of civil wars, including those based on religion. He thought that these conflicts, pitting brother against brother and driven by deep-seated divisions within a nation, demand a delicate touch and nuanced understanding beyond traditional military maneuvers. Yumini emphasized the unique devastation of civil wars, noting that these conflicts tear at the very fabric of society, eroding trust, dividing families, and leaving scars that can fester for generations. Unlike external wars where victory, or even loss, might bring national unity, Internal conflicts risk shattering a nation beyond repair. For example, in the United States, we still feel the echoes of the civil war that ended 160 years ago. Yomini urged leaders to go beyond simply viewing their opponents in internal conflicts as soldiers and ideologues. He believed in the importance of understanding the underlying political, 
religious or social fissures that fuel the flames of dissent. Only by grappling with the root causes can leaders hope to find lasting solutions. Yomini cautioned that winning a civil war is not synonymous with peace. He argued that the true test lies in binding the wounds of the nation, addressing the grievances that led to the conflict, and forging a path towards reconciliation. While he felt that military skill held its place, Yomini highlighted the crucial role of diplomacy and political maneuvering in internal conflicts. He urged leaders to prioritize dialogue over bloodshed, reconciliation over punishment, and the long-term healing of the nation over fleeting military victories. Only through such a mindful approach can hope emerge from the ashes of internal conflict. This is what Lincoln was striving for in his second inaugural address when he said with malice toward none with charity for all. In his tenth and final article on war and statesmanship, Yomini dives into the treacherous waters of double wars, the perilous undertaking of fighting two wars simultaneously. In it, he paints a stark picture of the strategic nightmares and potential pitfalls that await ambitious leaders tempted by simultaneous campaigns. As an experienced general, Yomini laid out the inherent difficulties of fighting on multiple fronts. He argued that dividing limited resources between two theaters weakens both campaigns because it left both fronts vulnerable to counteroffensives while hampering supply lines and demoralizing troops fighting on far-flung battlefields. Yomini felt that a leader would face a considerable psychological burden of juggling two wars. There is the constant pressure of making critical decisions across vast distances, often relying on incomplete information and facing unpredictable developments on both fronts. The resulting mental strain can lead to poor judgment, hasty decisions and a loss of strategic focus. He cited Napoleon's disastrous foray into Spain while struggling against Austria as a cautionary tale, showcasing how attempting to conquer two empires simultaneously can lead to overextension and ultimate defeat. We also saw how this played out in World War II, successfully for the US and unsuccessfully for Japan and Germany. However, while generally advocating against double wars, Yomini acknowledged that there were rare scenarios where such campaigns might be strategically sound. He emphasized the importance of ensuring strong alliances and securing advantageous strategic positions before embarking on such a risky endeavor. Yomini urged leaders to focus on a single decisive campaign at a time, prioritizing the consolidation of gains over the allure of territorial expansion. Only through careful strategic planning, excellent logistics and a resolute focus on one front at a time can victory be secured. This is how the US approached the European and Pacific theaters in World War II. One of the things that struck me about Yamini's writings from when I originally read them several years ago and in rereading them while writing this script was how insightful he was on the conduct of statesmanship in a time of conflict. Looking through the lens of his words, it's easy to see when political leaders are headed for failure or success when they engage in diplomacy and war. Perhaps that's why his writings have been influential in shaping policies, both on the military and political sides of the equation. Have you read Yomini's Art of War? I suggest you do if you have an interest in military and political philosophy. I've provided a link to the Project Gutenberg version in the description and print and audiobook versions are available on Amazon. Let me know what you think of Yomini's ideas in the comments and let me know if you would like more videos on topics like this. Thanks for joining us today for this discussion. Oh, by the way, while you're here, check out my other discussions on other philosophies and philosophers.